Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Super Chunk Super Audio Show. Last week, I did my first impressions on the C Audio Bravery. I spent the whole week listening to them and today I'd like to share with you guys my complete review of the C Audio Bravery. Let's go! Let's first start by talking about build quality. At this point of time, I'm pretty sure everybody knows how does a custom looking universal look like. Basically, it looks like a custom earphone but has some components that make it universal such as the ear tip instead of it being molded to your ear, it is actually terminated with a socket that holds your tip in place. And that's basically it. The Bravery comes in a very nice smoke uh, chassis that is paired with a swirly whirly black and white faceplate. Every time I look at it, it reminds me of Oreos and I haven't had Oreos in a while. Underneath the hood, the Bravery has four balance armatures as well. The Bravery also has a flush two pin connection, which I find to be a really nice touch. A flush two pin allows you to roll your cables. You can literally put any cables on them as long as they are two pin, as compared to a recessed two pin. However, a recessed two pin, I feel it's a little bit more sturdy. You can be a bit rougher with your IEMs when you have the recessed two pin, as the walls of this recessed socket gives it a little bit more structural strength. All in all, I think it's fine and I, for me, I like to roll cables so it's a nice touch. The cables that come with the Bravery comes in a very nice cloth braided texture. I reviewed the Arias earlier that had a similar type of finish, albeit in a smaller di diameter and I mentioned that the Aria cables were a bit tangly. This is not the case with the Bravery, it is actually quite tangle free and all I do most of the time is just call it my hands like that and put it in my bag and I can expect myself to be able to take them out rather quickly whenever I want to listen to them. Also to add, the cable terminates to a 3.5mm termination, which is great. Moving on to fit, now you can see that the Braveries are in my ears. I've used them for hours on end and I can tell you that it is actually very comfortable. There isn't any hot spots in my ears so yeah, it, it fits great, it doesn't fall off. It's comfortable. One thing you notice is that the Bravery is an unvented IEM. So there is a bit of a pressure build up if you wear them long enough, they might irritate your ears. For me personally, I like vented IEMs as I do not like the pressure build up in my ears. But honestly, for the Bravery, it's actually okay. But of course, my preference still lies with a vented IEM. The nozzle extends very comfortably into my ears. Also, with regards to fit, these Setna Earfit like X elastics are also included with the Bravery. These ear tips are very, very sticky and they actually makes your earphone feel a lot more secure and I do definitely get that with the Bravery. Now, moving on to sound, the Bravery actually sports a mild V-shaped signature. It is honestly a rather exciting listen at its price point. This earphone is not a flat sounding earphone. There is nice bass and warmth when it comes to the Bravery and this makes it rather an enchanting lesson. Sub bass on the Bravery has good extension and texture. Now I did mention that the Bravery is a mild V-shape earphone and this does not mean that it has excessive sub bass. It actually has a very well controlled bass and sub bass profile. The sub bass then later transitions into mid bass and I must say for the texture on the Bravery it is actually rather good. But one thing to note though, because the Bravery is a pure balanced armature earphone, the way that bass is done in this earphone, it's quite different from how a dynamic driver would do it. I find that the expansion of the bass is a little less natural than what is done on a dynamic driver. Also to add, transients and decay on the bass frequencies are also pretty average. It does not bleed into any other frequencies, which is great actually. I do not want bass beat to go into my mid-range and muddy up the mid-range and all that sort of thing. The Bravery does none of that. Overall, it's quite good. Moving on to mid-range. The Bravery has a mid-range that I think many would be very, very, very happy with. It is smooth with sufficient detail, making it an extremely enchanting listen. The level of the harmonics on the Bravery is more than adequate. There is a warmth and liquidity in the mid-range that really charms me. Vocals sound exceptionally sweet. There is one thing I'd like to add with regards to the Bravery. I listen to quite a lot of rock sometimes and by now everybody knows Guns N' Roses before they split right so they have really really nice guitar solos by Slash and I think the guitar solos by Slash it's amazing it sounds exceptionally liquid and smooth and it's actually really really slick sounding 
the transients and decay of the mid-range is actually rather average. I'm not saying that they are the fastest sounding earphone, but I find the way that it harmonizes with the other frequencies to be rather intriguing. Treble. Treble is adequately extended. Now, it does not go to the moon with the level of treble, but it does so in a way whereby it is actually quite pleasing to listen to. There is enough treble in the music to keep you captivated. Cymbals and crashes are crits, but I do not find them overly shouty, which is great for long listening sessions. In terms of air, are not the airiest of earphones that I have listened to in this price range, but they do quite a good job. It's just that some earphones do them a little bit better. Also, just to end off treble, the treble have zero sibilance. So if you're very sibilant sensitive, these might be the ones for you. Soundstage. The Braveries are closed style IEMs and I find that the soundstage on the whole is a rather intimate affair. Width and height. I don't find the Bravery to be exceptionally wide or tall sounding. It is more likened to a jazz club where things are smaller, cozy and intimate. Depth and positioning. The Bravery has very good depth rendering. If you're talking about instruments that are located further away, you can tell that they are located further away. There is good contrast with the instruments that are located further front actually. Positioning on the other hand, it's a little bit different. Earlier I mentioned that the transient response and decay is not the quickest. This kind of affects positioning in a certain manner. Because of that, I positioning is still good mind you. You can tell where the instruments are coming from, but it is not precisely pinpoint. It's a bit fuzzy, but on the whole, it's still really, really enjoyable. For pop and rock music, this wouldn't make much of a difference, but if you're listening to classical, it might not be the one for you. In conclusion, the Sea Audio Bravery. This is a budget-conscious earphone and has four drivers. I think that they perform remarkably if you pick up your genres that you listen to. This earphone does an excellent job if you listen to pop, rock, jazz, and all that good stuff, it is great. However, if you listen to things such as orchestral music or soundtracks, those are your gem. Maybe, I think the C Audio does an okay job. I just find them in terms of soundstage to be slightly less impressive due to its type of signature. It is a warmish signature. Uh, in terms of details, I think that it is okay, but for orchestral or soundtracks, you might actually prefer a earphone with slightly more details. At the end of the day, I think the Sea Audio Bravery is a very commendable earphone. And yeah, for 279 US dollars, I don't think that you have looked much further. This is a recommended earphone. And with that, thank you very much for watching Super Chunk Show. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope to see you guys soon. Let me know on what kind of content you'd like to see and if I can, I'll definitely make them. Thanks very much. I hope to, <laughs> I said this again, right? I hope to see you guys very soon. Yeah, ciao.